Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed Nail Trim Part 1. In this video, Part 2, Crystal will demonstrate how she works with all of the Basset Hound to desensitize her with the goal of easier nail trimming. Okay, so I'm getting ready to do Olive's nails and it's certainly not her favorite thing. So I haven't done as much training on this as I should have to make her more comfortable with it. But I wanna go over kind of the steps and the process to do it. Um, it's really important to do it and it's so great for your dog. But you know me, like many other people out there, my schedule just gets busy and things get away from me and I just put it off till tomorrow, put it off till tomorrow. So here we are. Um, so she normally gets her nails dremeled, which isn't her favorite thing, but I like to use the dremel for compared to clippers. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, a dremel is just a little power tool with a sandpaper bit on it. And then it spins and it allows you to be able to trim the nails as opposed to just standard clippers where you're going to be cutting those nails. So Olive has really short nails because we keep up with them every week. We want to prevent them from getting long. Um, Basset hounds in general, they're just known uh, are prone to having excessively long nails. So they grow fast. She just turned a year old. So her puppy food is still really rich. We're just finishing up some bags before transitioning her to adult food. But her puppy food makes her nails grow long. And once they grow long that quick, which is the blood supply in there, that grows longer as well. So it prevents you from being able to take them down really short again. So you kind of get one shot at it to do it in a way that's not gonna be painful for the dog. Uh, so Olive tends to squirm a little bit. So I bought a doggy lift, which is gonna be coming up next. But I wanted to go over just the training steps of, you know, now that I have time and I'm gonna dedicate it to getting her more comfortable with this process, I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing currently to do it, what our struggles were, and why I ultimately got that doggy lift to be helpful. So I tried luring her over here. I have a jar of just various treats in there. Um, so when I called her to me after I got all set up, I offered her a treat just to make that more pleasant. But she knows, I mean, she can see that the Dremel is out. So I like to use the Dremel over the clippers for a couple reasons. It allows me to take that nail a little shorter and get all of the, the excess part off and only leave the quick. Where with the clippers, I just don't have that same confidence. So for me, it's something I'm more comfortable with. So when looking at a dog's nails, I mean, it's similar to our fingernails where all of the flesh colored part that's blood supply. If that nail were to get cut below that part, it would be painful, we would bleed. And then the white tips on there, that's essentially the dead nail that has no feeling. So dog's nails are exactly the same. They're just shaped different. Uh, Olive is easy because she has pink nails, which allow me to see through them much easier. Uh, dogs that are darker in color are gonna have black nails. And you just can't see that quick as well, but it's still in there. So for me, since I do a lot of different dogs' nails, being a trainer, uh, I don't exactly know where their quicks are, if I can't see them or if they're just not gonna cooperate. I wanna make sure I can get them down as short as possible and do it in a way that's gonna be safe for the dog. Um, another reason that I prefer the Dremel, kind of my number one reason actually, is I do a lot of different tricks and behaviors where I ask my dogs to either put their paws up on me, kind of step across, lay on me, different things like that. Or more commonly, you know, a lot of people have dogs who just jump. And so as I'm training, whether it's intentional jumping or jumping I want to prevent, those nails are still hitting your legs. And so when they're dremeled, it's nice and smooth, but when you clip, it leaves a lot of really sharp edges. So especially in summer, if you have shorts on, it just really digs in and it's painful. So I prefer uh, both the feel of the dremeled nails, I can get them shorter, so then I don't have to hear the sound of their clicking on the hard floor. So that's kind of my indicator when the nails need to be done, um, which 
it's gonna vary. Some dogs will need their nails done every week, like what we do here. And others might go, you know, a couple months before it really gets ground out. It just depends on their activity level, if they're running a lot on cement versus grass versus carpet, or if they're just really sedentary. So that's kind of how dogs' nails naturally grow. But some of them, just the way the foot is shaped, that nail never really makes contact with the ground until they get really long. And if they're too long, it prevents the dog from being able to get their foot comfortably on the ground. Where if those nails are overgrown, it can sometimes kind of like twist the toes. So you know walking, especially for large breed dogs that have a lot of weight behind them, that's gonna be really painful. So our dogs need help. I mean, dogs are a man-made invention, essentially. So they weren't built to have their nails you know, like that in nature, so we've got to help them out. So, Olive gets a little squirmy when she hears the Dremel coming on, so I'm just going to show you her reaction first, and then I'm going to go back and break it down into how I'm going to work on desensitizing her. And the training, it'll be like five minutes a day, so it's not a big time commitment. It's something I can easily do. It's just about committing to it and being diligent and giving it five minutes a day. All right, so, yeah. Put out. So she knows to lay there. And when I touch it to her, it vibrates. It doesn't hurt. But you can see she gets really squirmy. So then I either need my husband to help hold her or I start kind of doing some pretzel twists where I'm wrapping her in that good girl. Good. So when I'm restraining, I don't I really want her squirming and pushing me to not make the Dremel stop. I want to catch that moment where she relaxes or she's not fighting me and then I'll kind of give her that break because a break is going to be a reward. So to break it down, and this is going to vary kind of where you need to start. Some dogs may have trouble just entering the room when they see either the clippers or the Dremel come out. So we're going to focus on the Dremel specifically. Um, all of us comfortable enough to come into the room, come up to me. I had to help her get rolled over. So I will do some work on getting her, hold oh, still sweet, um, getting her to move her shoulders and hips easily when I push so I can just roll her easily. She can do it when she's really relaxed, but she was a little too stiff. So I have to build up to training her to do that with something that she perceives as not so great right now. So, I'll first start, you know, letting her see it, sniff it, so it's never sneaking up on her. When she interacts, she gets a treat. And this can, like, half of this is kibble, half is some good treats. Depending how scared a dog is, you may need to pull out, like, the best treat you have. So, I'll first kind of hold her paw, and I could feel her paw twitching a little. So I'm just going to kind of massage it, spread out the toes, you know, kind of hold it in the position that I'm going to be doing once I bring the Dremel in. And so when she's relaxed, I'll give her that treat. And I like to try to keep the Dremel in the picture still so she's seeing it as she's getting that treat. And then I'll kind of move to it where I can rub it on the bottoms of her feet, the tops, kind of stick out every nail, do a little tapping. Good girl. So all of his progressed past this stage because we've done a lot of work on body handling. So I'm kind of whipping through that part quickly. Some dogs, you may need to treat every single motion. It may start with just a light touch and you give a treat. And then you do the next nail, light touch and treat. Um, and just go around to all four feet like that. Good girl. But since she's good with her body handling, she doesn't mind me messing with her feet. She's in a good comfortable restraint position. And people will do this in different ways. Some people have the dog standing, sitting up on a grooming table. For me, I like to have the dog between my legs where I can kind of make that comfortable space and I can kind of use my thighs to hold her in place if she squirms. But it's just kind of the easiest for me to see what I'm doing. So totally personal preference there. So now, after I touched her with the Dremel off, I would just turn it on. And if it has different settings, you can adjust it and go to like the lowest, quietest setting up to the highest. So then I'll just do some touching. So as long as she's staying calm with it, I'm just going to keep, you know, 
praising her going through the steps, but if she were to be pulling her foot away at this point, again, I would take that part much slower. So she's good at the lowest level. I'm gonna crank it up a little, go through that same process. Good girl. And then I like to keep the Dremel on and kind of keep that vibration on her foot. So when she takes that food, she's getting all that reward. So then I'll work up to just touching the nail. Good girl. And I could see like her back feet tensed up there. So her changing her position tells me that I've reached a level that she's a little uncomfortable at now. So I was able to do it with that end, but that adds a little bit more vibration. It tugs at the nail, it's a different sound. So whatever part of that she's reacting to, she just tells me she needs more time with it. So I'll just go through and do each nail. Big girl. So that one was better than the last. So I was doing like two touches. Now I'm gonna try, see if I can do three. Good girl. Yeah, keep that vibration on. So you would just go through and do this. And at one level, I would go and do all four of the feet. And this may take days. I mean, you may only get one paw a day and that's okay. Just as long as you're doing five minutes a day, that's closer than you were the day before. So then I would work up to, you know, getting it up to a comfortable spot where I wanted it and then kind of holding it for a little longer. Good girl. And then repeat that until you're able to have your dog just stay in place. So I kept it nice and low so she didn't struggle very much at all. Um, had I just kind of dove in and did it on the highest setting, uh, which I normally like to do it at the highest or the second highest, just because it goes a lot quicker and I can put more pressure on the Dremel without it kind of doing its automatic stop. Uh, so we prevented the struggling and that's ultimately the goal. I want this little session to end up being a really positive thing for her because she thinks it's a bad thing and I just, I have to do her nails at some point. So it's been just kind of this little wrestling match. Um, but now we're just gonna work and just give her that time because now I have a new contraption where I get to eliminate this fight. So let's go check out the doggy lift now. Make sure to follow us so you don't miss the release of part three when Crystal introduces the device she mentioned. Also, please give us a thumbs up and comment below on what you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.